Transportation is responsible for 16% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Most of the products you use, the food you eat and the clothes you wear are transported at least once and usually many times on vehicles that use diesel engines. Go out to buy vegetables and ask the vendor how he got those vegetables and he would tell you that transporting those vegetables to market was made possible by a machine that runs on diesel. Such is our dependence on diesel. Transportation is not the most significant cause of emissions, but it is the number one in developed countries like the United States. Well, it seems they fly and drive a lot. If you look at the percentage of emissions by modes of transportation, you will notice that cargo ships contribute 10% of emissions, while passenger vehicles like cars, SUVs and motorcycles account for almost half of the greenhouse emissions. We don't have to worry about passenger vehicles because we already have found a viable alternative to replace them. Electric cars are set to become mainstream in the next few years. But when it comes to long distance transportation, we have hit a dead end. Numbers Don't Lie by Waklaus Mill Page number 109 Why you shouldn't ride diesel off just yet? Diesels are the uncontested enablers of massively centralized industrial production and the irreplaceable prime movers of globalization. Diesels power virtually all container ships and all carriers of vehicles and bulk commodities such as oil, liquefied natural gas, ores, cement, fertilizers and grain. Without the low operating costs, high efficiency, high reliability and great durability of the diesel engines, it would have been impossible to reach the extent of globalization that now defines the modern economy. The global economy is dependent on our ability to transport goods and services worldwide, from the remotest part of the world to the most developed one and vice versa. And the most efficient way of transporting goods across the world is using the waterways. Maritime shipping now handles 90% of the goods traded around the world by volume and produces nearly 3% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Virtually all container ships run on diesel engines and use either diesel or bunker fuel. Shipping is the backbone of our modern economy. In the next few years, as more and more countries participate in the world trade, we are set to transport even more goods worldwide. If left unchecked, maritime shipping will produce nearly 15% of the global carbon emissions by 2050. That is a five-fold increase in a span of just 30 years. So it makes sense to find alternatives to diesel engines used in ships and decarbonize the shipping industry as much as possible. Some believe using electric powered ships is the solution. But is it really? The two most important factors to consider while choosing a fuel for any machine are the energy density of fuel and the green premium. Energy density in simple words means how much energy can be stored in a given space per unit volume. If some fuel can store more energy in less space or less volume, then that means the energy density of that fuel is high. The more energy of fuel can store in less volume, the higher its energy density. When it comes to long distance transportation, most particularly in the case of cargo ships, you need fuel that has high energy density so that it occupies less space and provides more energy. A standard intercontinental container ship from Asia to Europe burns 5000 tons of fuel, which is usually low quality residual oil called bunker fuel or diesel. If you want to run that same ship over the same distance on electricity, you would have to load it with 1 lakh tons of today's best commercial lithium ion batteries. 1 lakh tons, which amounts to 40% of the cargo handling capacity of that ship, never mind the difficulties in charging and operating the ship. Giving up 40% of ship space for lithium ion batteries is not economically viable for shipping companies. The primary reason why batteries take up so much space is that the energy density of lithium ion batteries is very low. Diesel's energy density is at least 40 times greater than that of a lithium ion battery. 40 times. Second factor, the green premium. The green premium is the additional cost of choosing a clean technology over one that emits a greater amount of greenhouse gases. A lot of human activities generate greenhouse gases, generating electricity, transportation, growing food, heating buildings, and making materials like steel and cement. If our goal was simply to emit 10% less greenhouse gas, you can imagine trying to limit those activities. But because we need to get to zero emissions by 2050, we have to come up with an alternate way, which isn't too much more expensive, to perform those same activities without 
emitting any greenhouse gases. We can compare the cost per unit of the current way of doing it to the approach that creates no emissions. So the actual extra cost, which we call the green premium for things like green jet fuel is very high. Green premium is a tool that gives us a way of looking at how far away we are from making it easy and where this green premium is the highest, that's where we need to put resources behind solving that particular area. We need a lot of research and development, a lot of innovative companies to help us get the green premium down. And if you can get it down close to zero, yes, that will get us to this 2050 goal of zero emissions. How to avoid a climate disaster by Bill Gates. Page number 144. Making the switch to alternatives would do us a lot of good because shipping alone accounts for 3% of all emissions. Using clean fuels would give us a meaningful reduction. Unfortunately, the fuel that container ships run on is called bunker fuel. It is dirt cheap because it is made from the dregs of the oil refining process. Since their current fuel is so inexpensive, the green premium for ships is very high. Down here, there are tables explaining how much green premium is required for using various clean and zero carbon alternative fuels. Bunker fuel costs just $1.29 per gallon, while its zero carbon alternatives such as advanced biofuels cost $5.5 per gallon. You need to pay three times more money for using a zero carbon alternative to diesel. That's a 300% green premium. The same goes for using the batteries. The green premium is high for the lithium ion batteries because of two reasons. First, batteries occupy a lot of space and negatively affect the load carrying capacity of ships. And second, manufacturing batteries is an expensive process and yet battery life is limited. So basically the cost of storage is too high. The best conventional container ship can carry 200 times more cargo than the handful of electric ships now in operation. And they can run routes that are 400 times longer. The rule of thumb here is the bigger the vehicle you want to move, the farther you want to drive it and the more the load you need to carry the harder and more difficult it becomes to use electric vehicles. To make transporting goods using electric powered cargo ships economically viable, we will have to increase the energy density of lithium ion batteries by at least tenfold. But in the last 70 years, we have only managed to increase it by threefold. So it's not gonna be easy. There are a few more alternatives such as using electrofuels, the hydrogen fuel cells, but the technology is still in its early days and the green premium is pretty high. You need to pay 3 to 6 times more money to use electrofuels instead of diesel or bunker fuel. Only finding a solution is not enough. Making that solution economically viable is the most important part. The bottom line is, using electric powered ships to move goods across the globe is not going to be feasible for the foreseeable future. Diesel engines are here to stay. There are no readily available mass mover alternatives that could keep transporting goods affordably and efficiently around the globe to keep the global economy afloat. If you are interested in digging a bit deeper, I recommend you to read these three books and watch my documentaries on energy. To economically support my efforts to create well-researched videos, you can either buy books from my affiliate links or send me super thanks. I thank all the donors for their valuable contributions. If you find my content useful, smash that like button. That's enough for today. See you in the next video.